I wanna talk a little bit about the creative process and making things with your hands today. You know, I got into architecture because I wanted to be able to build models every day of my professional life. And it's actually what I thought architects spent most of their time doing. And although that's not entirely true, I definitely make time for making models as often as I possibly can. There's something really special about them. And in architecture practice today, they're actually somewhat exotic because most architects are relying on digital modeling and rendering tools, which are you know, faster and they're easier to change and you get all these realistic materials. And you know, my response to people who ask me, why do you even bother building physical models out of wood and cardboard and clay at all anymore? We have access to these great tools. My response is always that I find I just get better results that way. And I know this can kind of seem like anecdotal personal evidence that's just applicable to me, but there's actually scientific research that's been done that shows making things with your hands actually is linked to our thought processes. It actually produces more efficient, more creative, and often more insightful results. This is proof that thinking isn't a task that just happens up here and it's not just relegated to the brain but it also happens as sensory inputs from our environment you know if you think about if you've ever played scrabble what you do with the scrabble tiles as you line them up you know you're looking at the letters here but you're physically rearranging them and you know sometimes that's by chance and sometimes that's intentional but it's these collisions of the deliberate and the unexpected that produce some really great things One of the things that making physical models allows you to do is step away entirely from the distraction of the digital environment. So moving away from the computer and picking up your pencil and sticks and wood and glue and rulers and tweezers, doing this kind of distraction-free thinking is really valuable and there's very little space in our world for that right now. You know, something else, the end product, it's tangible. You know, models are these beautiful kind of little jewels and I think they're really irresistible. You know, digital models just aren't endearing in the same way that your Instagram feed isn't something you'd probably frame on your wall. They just don't encourage you to engage with them in the same way that a physical model does. A model is this manifestation of your work. It's something you can hold in your hand and there's something really wonderful about that. You know, like sketches, they are open-ended. They suggest a multiplicity of solutions, not just one solution. You know, the finished rendering and the finished computer model suggest one singular solution. This suggests that the cladding could be metal, it could be wood, it could be any number of things. And, you know, I could spray paint this thing 16 different colors if I wanted to, to test, you know, what those solutions might do to the final form of it. You know, this idea about deliberate moves, deliberate design moves versus unexpected ones is really interesting to me too. And models allow for that to happen in an open exploration. I view these models as teaching tools. It's very difficult to fake the realities of construction even with a tiny physical model like this. So if you build something here and it feels flimsy, it starts racking like this, you understand pretty quickly, okay, I need a shear panel here. I need to brace this wall from moving back and forth. And, and you get a real tactile sense of how materials go together, how they're joined, what works and what doesn't. You know, building models is a practice that builds material intuition. And I just don't think there are very many ways to get that experience other than practicing in real life with real buildings and real materials where there's a lot more liability and a lot more risk and there's human safety involved. So building models is a really great teaching tool. Now there's this term called metacognition, which is stopping, taking a moment to think about how you're actually thinking about a problem. And building models, is this kind of metacognition process for me. Models are a way of stepping back, reevaluating the problem, and asking yourself if you are asking all the right questions. All right, that's all I have for this time. Go out there and make things. Cheers, my friends. We'll see you again next time.